Ngolo Ngolo is the art of intentionally scarring the body by creating decorative keloids on the dermal layer of the skin. Luo, who practiced it, required one to be at least 16 years old to voluntarily participate. Richly malinated skin is known to be more prone to keloid formation. Thus, individuals who could not achieve this easily, that is a keloid formation, would be aided by removing of the scab and irritation of the intended area. Why did they do the ngolo? The scars were made for different reasons, including but not limited to rites of passage, beautification, identification, inoculation, and spirituality. Rites of passage. Ngolo was used to harden people at various stages of their lives. The practice was said to increase an individual's endurance, that is physically and mentally, foster empathy in conflict situations, and enhance cognitive development. It was solely based on an individual's choice. Some communities used it to train, toughen teenagers into adulthood, as a rite of passage into marriage and during major transitionary life events, for example, marriage. Beautification. The first point of attraction is noticing or being noticed. Elaborate marks would definitely create an icebreaker. The marks were considered brave and attractive to various individuals and groups. Some individuals have reported heightened sensitivity to touch in the area where there's keloids. Identification. Patterns made by the facial marks would immediately identify one's lineage, age, merits, social and marital status. In case of kidnapping by invaders, the marks would help identify and reunite families. Inoculation and therapeutics. The act of creating the keloids would break the skin barrier, allowing topical and environmental pathogens in, effectively strengthening one's immunity. The wounds would be rubbed with various medicinal herbs used to cure and prevent diseases. Spirituality Ngolo was also considered part of a spiritual process in that the scarred parts would be highly sensitive to the natural environment and by extension, the life force, that is key. The symbols communicated spiritual messages, offered protection and enabled recognition by the ancestors. In case the keloids were put on an individual as a result of war fatality, they were used for atonement and a sign of respect of life by acknowledging that the deceased spirit was respected despite their occurrence. Not all markings were embossed. Some were indented as seen on this beautiful Yoruba lady from Nigeria. And I said, as I said before, we do share a lot of culture with the Yoruba and the Igbo people of Nigeria. When interviewed, the two beautiful Bukunabe women had different views to offer. The one to the left did not like them, and the one to the right loved them to the point of passing it on to her kids. How old is a practice? The earliest evidence uncovered so far is this pictograph dated back to 6000 to 4000 BCE at the Tassil Najar, Algeria, dubbed the Running Horn Goddess. Please note, those were the earliest depictions noticed, and the practice must have started earlier than that. Here's a family of three with the scarification marks on their bodies. Next, we see an Olmec era sculpture dated circa 1000 before Common Era from Mexico and Belize, showing markings on the faces 
And here is a monument from Belize that shows clarification similar to those found in Luolan and Yoruba markings. Next, we look at Chambari men from PNG with markings on their torso. They believe their great ancestor came from a crocodile, similar to the belief held by the Shuluk, who are a Luo group and an Nilotic group. Most of this clarification is actually seen in people originating from the Nile Valley, so that's a food for thought. In Yoruba, the practice is called Kolo, which is phonetically similar to Molo. Here you see Ghanaian top model Baidu, who says she's very proud of her scars. Next, a Ghanaian man showing scarification on the cheek. In Nodena, Mississippi County, USA, circa 900 to 1500 AD, we see a pottery that was found dating that many years ago, and we'll compare it to scarification on a Nigerian lady and a gentleman from Burkina Faso. You can see how similar the scarring marks are to those two. Next, we see a pottery from Mississippi County, dating the same era, circa 900 to 1500 AD. And now we see terracotta figurines found in Jena Islands of Yucatan Peninsula. And this clarification, you can see they're so similar to the Nilotic peoples. In conclusion, as we let go of certain practices, every subsequent generation is obligated to honor and try to understand why certain things were done the way they were. Even as new discoveries come up, to give us new modified solutions, because nothing is new under the sun, to age-old problems, we cannot simply dismiss practices that have been observed for millennia, labeling them as backward in our need to fit in in the current society and leave them behind. As we let cultural practices we don't understand go, other people adopt them, and commercialize them, they embrace them and claim them as their own. So we have to wisen up, if not just preserving our culture, we can as well be the ones to commercialize it, like the Sun and the Khoi people in Southern Africa who found a way to commercialize their medicinal plants. Can you like, subscribe and hit the notifications bell in this video? Thank you.